In the ranks of the mighty Roman army, a soldier's existence was a relentless test of metal, a crucible for the bravest of souls. Bound by duty, they were plucked from the embrace of their homelands, severed from kin and companions, and thrust into the unforgiving embrace of distant provinces. There, amidst the farthest reaches of the empire, they stood resolute, braving the wrath of indomitable natives defending their sacred soils from the tides of invasion. The life they knew was one of ceaseless toil, enduring the unforgiving elements and treacherous landscapes. Across rugged, perilous terrain, they marched with unwavering resolve, facing the wrath of nature's fury. Yet this was merely the prelude to the battles that awaited them. Lengthy, gruelling clashes against formidable warriors, where victory was the only path to survival. But what motivated these valiant souls to embrace such a path fraught with danger? Why did they willingly step into the crucible, defying the odds? For some, it was the allure of adventure, the promise of venturing into uncharted territories, where every sunrise brought new discoveries and thrills beyond imagination. Others sought the sanctuary of a stable livelihood, a well-compensated profession that offered security and the chance to hone invaluable skills, paving the way to ascension within the ranks. When their battle-worn bodies were finally granted respite, retirement awaited as the crown jewel of their sacrifice. Land and a steady income would be bestowed upon them, ensuring a life of comfort and tranquility, while their civilian counterparts toiled endlessly, sentenced to toil until their bodies withered. The Roman soldiers would bask in a golden twilight. After a dedicated tenure of 25 years, they would lay down their weapons, their journey complete. Thus, while others fought the ravages of time, these veterans would revel in the spoils of a life well earned, a life defined by dignity, serenity and prosperity. Before we get into the video, I'd appreciate it if you liked the video and subscribed to the channel. It helps me out and more importantly, it's free and you can always change your mind. As the recruit crossed the threshold into the hallowed realm of the Roman army, an indomitable pact was forged, a covenant binding them for a span of 25 years. Typically, these aspiring soldiers, they would age between 18 and 22. However, tales whispered through the annals of history recount the exceptional case of Marcus Latinus, a mere 15 summers old when he was welcomed into the legions. The elite echelons of officers, born into influential lineages, enjoyed a different trajectory. Their connections paved the way to swifter ascension and a shorter tenure of service. Commanding posts were but transient stations, a mere stepping stone in their rise. Often their military careers branched into the civilian domain, where they skillfully manoeuvred amongst politicians and generals, exerting their sway and shaping the destiny of an empire. Yet, not all who yearned for the honour of donning the Roman armour were deemed worthy. Prospective recruits underwent rigorous examinations and stringent medical assessments, ensuring their metal was forged from the finest steel. Those blessed with innate vigour and strength were swiftly groomed, their physical prowess needing only refinement. But it was not solely the body that served as the litmus test. Character too was weighed in the balance a testament to the qualities befitting a true Roman citizen. The sanctity of lineage granted automatic privilege, the legacy of a noble bloodline coursing through their veins. However, for those hailing from distant provinces, the path to citizenship lay in the sacred act of pledging allegiance to the Emperor, a symbolic union with the eternal city of Rome. Bound by a solemn oath, recruits paid homage not in the Emperor's presence, but before their commanding officer, an embodiment of imperial authority. With unwavering conviction, they professed their undying commitment to the Empire, to their comrades, and to their very best selves. Through this sacred bond, they embarked on a journey where valour would be their constant companion, honour their guiding star, and the legacy of Rome their eternal muse. Once within the ranks of the illustrious army, the fresh recruit found themselves thrust into a crucible of training, their every move scrutinised and evaluated. A symphony of trials awaited, seeking to unearth hidden talents and extraordinary aptitudes. Should a recruit display a mastery of equestrian prowess, their fate would be sealed, a noble destiny among the cavalry, granted their stature reached no less than 5 foot 8. Having donned their uniform and been entrusted with the weighty arsenal of war, the soldier embarked on four arduous months of foundational instruction. 
This comprehensive regimen encompassed a plethora of disciplines, from the deft manipulation of weapons to the intricacies of tactical manoeuvring and the art of close quarters combat. Although the latter skill was not the focus of extensive tutelage, the Roman soldiers fought as an indomitable collective, unified in their adherence to standard battle tactics rather than individual prowess. Nonetheless, the techniques of unarmed combat were imparted for dire circumstances. A soldier adrift from their comrades, bereft of arms amidst the chaos of battle, or facing unexpected perils alone on the streets. Only when the soldiers' training had become second nature, etched into their very being, did they join their peers, their lessons culminating in the harmonious ballet of unified combat. They were schooled in the sacred dance of collective warfare, learning to move as one. Their actions intertwined, each soldier a cog in a mighty machine. But their education was not limited to physical exertion alone. The recruits delved into the intricacies of observation, honing their ability to perceive the, min the most minute details in their surroundings. Stealth became their ally as they mastered the art of moving in the shadows, silently traversing the terrain. Discipline, an unwavering companion, forged their character and moulded them into paragons of fortitude. And then there was language, a crucial facet of their training. The Roman officers issued their commands in the cadence of Latin, the language of the empire, hailing from the very heart of Italy. Thus, for those Romanized citizens plucked from the provinces to serve, the arduous task of mastering Latin joined the weighty burden of countless other skills they were expected to acquire. In this crucible of training, where mind, body and spirit intertwined, the recruits metamorphosized. From humble novices, they emerged as warriors in their own right equipped with an array of proficiencies, primed to serve the empire with unwavering devotion. Upon completing their training, the soldier stood at the precipice of his own destiny, awaiting the beckoning call of his commanding officer. Like an artist selecting his brush, the officer would assign each soldier to a unit, handpicking the perfect match. Within the vast tapestry of the military, a multitude of specialized units thrived each serving a distinct purpose in the grand symphony of warfare. Not every soldier bore the mantle of the infantry. Those stalwart warriors trained to wage battle as an indomitable collective. There existed a diverse array of roles, where valor took on different shades and duties embraced a myriad of forms. Scouts, envoys of audacity, embarked on daring ventures, venturing ahead of the advancing main force, stealthily navigating the treacherous domains to glean vital intelligence on enemy movements. Battles, you see, were not always waged upon open fields, and it fell upon these intrepid souls to tread a mile ahead of the legion, vigilant sentinels, uncovering the lurking perils that lay in wait. The ambush, that age-old stratagem of the adversary, poised as the most insidious threat, Thus, the advanced spies unravel the hidden snares, their discerning eyes piercing the shroud of danger. Auxiliary troops, those formidable protectors, flank the main force, standing as a bulwark against assaults from the sides. Behind the legionaries, a mighty cavalry continent galloped, their steeds thundering in unison, while the support personnel trail closely, burdened with the weight of provisions, camp equipment, and all that sustain the formidable war machine. In this mosaic of unity, the Roman army wove disparate factions into a cohesive whole. Each thread was vital and each component was indispensable. For the fresh recruit, a missive awaited, a document bearing his name, age and a brief testament to his mettle. Within its sacred words lay an intricate evaluation of his capabilities, a mosaic of strengths and weaknesses accompanied by recommendations. It delineated the role he would assume within the Legion, tailored to his unique essence. Thus, armed with this parchment, he ventured forth, ready to inscribe his name upon the annals of history, his destiny interwoven with the grand tapestry of the Roman legions. From the era of Gaius Marius and onward, the valiant legionaries were endowed with an annual stipend of 225 denarii. This bedrock remuneration remained unaltered until the reign of Domitian, who, with a flourish of benevolence, raised it to 300 denarii. Despite the relentless onslaught of inflation during the second century, the stipend stagnated until the time of Septimus Severus. It was this visionary emperor who, recognizing the valor and sacrifice of the legionaries, amplified their reward to a priceless sum of 500 denarii per annum. 
However, it must be noted that the soldiers did not receive the full amount in tangible coinage, for the state exacted a portion as payment for clothing and sustenance, a necessary deduction from their hard-earned wages. Yet the wily legionary, traversing the treacherous landscapes of war, aspired for more than mere monetary gain. Amidst the chaos of battle, they yearned to reap the spoils of war, to collect the riches from the lifeless forms of their adversaries and plunder the settlements of their foes. Slaves too became a coveted prize, snatched from the clutches of defeated prisoners and divided among the legion for future sale, a bountiful supplement to their regular earnings. However, the rewards did not cease upon the culmination of their active service. All legionary soldiers, upon completing a noble term of 25 years or more, were graced with Priamia, a cornucopia of benefits bestowed upon these veterans. Within the embrace of this commendation lay a substantial sum of money, a testament to their devotion and valour. From the days of Augustus, a staggering 3,000 denarii. Alternatively, a plot of fertile farmland, a coveted asset in great demand, was granted to these revered warriors. These parcels of earth bestowed upon the veterans proved instrumental in establishing control over frontier regions and quelling rebellious provinces. As the march of time unfolded, Caracalla, that illustrious ruler, enhanced the Priamia, uh, elevating it to a grand sum of 5,000 denarii, a testament to the enduring gratitude and admiration reserved for those who had dedicated their lives to the Roman cause. The ironclad military discipline of the legions left no room for leniency. A Roman soldier's existence was one of unyielding rigidity and uncompromising standards. Centurions wielded their canes with frequency and precision, swiftly punishing any display of sloppiness or failure to meet the pinnacle of one's abilities. For even the slightest transgressions, a soldier could expect an array of punitive measures. Demotion, loss of privileges and confinement in the dreary confines of the brig were the customary consequences, even for minor indiscretions. However, more grave offences such as pilfering a comrade's possessions or forsaking the sacred oath of allegiance were regarded as the most severe crimes, and according to martial law, these transgressors faced a grim fate, being mercilessly beaten to death by their fellow soldiers. Such was the unforgiving nature of military justice. In this harsh realm, many legionaries embraced the worship of the lesser-known goddess Disciplinia. They fervently adhered to her virtues of frugality, severity and unwavering loyalty, for these principles form the very fabric of their code of conduct and way of life. Within this realm of discipline, punishments manifested in varying degrees. Minor infractions could result in public humiliation, as a soldier would be compelled to stand near the fortress's entrance with his tunica unbelted, a seemingly trivial matter to us, denizens of our lax and modern world, but an immense source of disgrace to them. Imagine the gravity of a transgression related to honour. These Romans were a people who took matters of honour with the utmost seriousness. Other minor punishments included being struck by a centurion's staff, or enduring a reduction in rations, forced to subsist on barley instead of the customary grain allowance. Monetary fines, deductions from pay, flogging in front of one century, cohort or legion, and the brutal whipping, a far more savage form of scourging, were also administered. The flagrum, a short whip, was wielded by slave volunteers, who constituted a significant portion of the army during the twilight years of the Roman Empire. Additionally, a soldier could face a reduction in rank. However, for more egregious offences, major punishments loomed ominously. Desertion or dereliction of duty could lead to the dreaded fusturium, a sentence of being stoned or beaten to death by cudgels in the presence of the entire assembly of troops, administered by one's comrades or those whose lives had been endangered. Soldiers who managed to escape this sentence lived under a perpetual exile from Rome, their lives forever marked by banishment. In case where a group of legionaries were condemned, the tribune would intercede to spare the majority of the accused. A select few would face the original punishment, while the remaining offenders would be expelled from the camp and forced to survive in defenceless surroundings for a predetermined duration, subsisting solely on barley. Another dreaded form of punishment was decimation, inflicted upon entire units that mutinied, deserted, or displayed dereliction of duty. Cowardice was regarded as the gravest offence of all. If a single soldier fled from battle, the survivors would be subjected to a fate that filled their hearts with terror. 
Following a trial and conviction for cowardice, a chilling procedure unfolded. Through a lottery, one in every ten men would be selected, condemned to face a beating of death, usually administered by the remaining nine with their bare hands. These fortunate enough to be spared immediate execution were consigned to a meagre existence on a diet of barley and water, banished from the camp's protective embrace. In some cases, they were even compelled to reaffirm their military oath, the sacramentum, a solemn reminder of their transgressions and the perpetual stain on their honour.